So speaking of that, Kay Jackson, here we are back, episode two, uh, and you had a really kind of a good topic for us to ta- uh, tackle today. Yeah, I was thinking about talking about negative self-talk. Mm. I think a lot, of, uh, a lot of us have done that in our lives. Um, some of us have worked a little bit out of that, but uh, it's, I have noticed it a lot with clients. I've talked a lot with clients about it. And um, I think it really can take away from well-being pretty quickly if we don't recognize that we're doing it. And I think that's one of the interesting things. We um, notice it when other people say things to us that are negative and we, you know, maybe take it personally or feel bad about it. But we often don't recognize when we are talking to ourselves negatively. Mm -hmm. And I think some of those key words that pop to my head quickly are, I should be, I can't. I don't know how, you know, those, those um, words that I, I kind of talk about is like they create burden, like they create weight on your shoulders and they can really um, change your dynamic in terms of how do I feel today? What can I accomplish? I'm, I don't, you know, you can feel unempowered by using yeah. those words too often. Well, and you, you said, yeah, I, I, I see it as it holding people back. Um, you know, again, my world, you know, sort of the health fitness sort of piece. Um, I've worked with so many people and, and men and women, both sides, where their lack of self or negative self-talk has prevented them from feeling like empowered to actually do something. Or, you know, for everybody who's come through my door that I've been able to work through that, I know that there's a thousand people behind them that would never think, oh, I shouldn't do that. I can't do that. Oh, those are, well, that's weights. Oh, I shouldn't be lifting. Oh, you know, let alone going into the realm of body awareness and body uh, sort of dysmorphia, what that, you know, what they, when they look in a mirror, I mean, I deal with that all the time. So this is a huge topic. Um, how would you, going back to some of those keywords that you talked about, how, what would be your thoughts or advice around, you know, what are some first steps that somebody might take? Yeah. So the thing that I often talk to people about, and I actually did this myself, I, I tested myself on this, this um, chip of my, that I'm going to give you today, which was a few years ago, I noticed, took notice, decided to take notice for a day, how often I said to myself, I should be doing blah, 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 blah. And uh, it was quite shocking. I, I said should a lot and noticed that it was really truly creating burden for me. It just felt like a um, blaming or shaming word to me. So the ne- very next day, what I did was, um, as I became aware of how often I was saying should, in the moment, if I could catch myself, I would actively sort of intentionally stop myself and say, okay, what, what word can I replace that with? So for instance, like, oh, I should have walked the dog today. Instead of you know, changing that and say, well, I'm going to walk the dog in 30 minutes, or I will walk the dog at a different time tomorrow. Um, Just, just changing the words just a little bit makes it feel like there's some, there's less shaming going on. And it allows you to move forward again, not limiting me, um, because I have now created this burden on me that I'm, I'm a bad person somehow, because I'm not doing all the things that I should be doing or that others are doing. Well, and I love that self-awareness piece i mean it all starts there you know what i what what it was making me think about is for me i tend to be sort of a a support system to help empower people to work through that because there is a there's you know my gym is a high touch facility and whether it's one-on-one or even in a small group so you know in that initial consult and building that relationship with somebody I'm always listen. I'm always fascinated with word choices. We we talk about that all the time together, you and me. Um, and when I can observe hearing somebody, and I can identify that there's somebody in front of me that's holding themselves back, these are just things that I'm filing in the back of my head. And we're going to just start our path together, and we're going to start the path as gentle as or as appropriate as we need to, and we're going to walk together in the way I sort of visualize it. That I've, you know, and I've seen this with, I don't want to say hundreds, but a lot of people. And there's nothing more fun for me and, and validating and um, fulfilling is to help somebody get through that. And the way I kind of visualize it is it's like, 
I'm sort of kind of standing next to them and I'm just kind of holding their hand a little bit gently as we're just kind of taking gentle steps and I'm listening to word choices and I'm dialoguing with them and this is whether it's resistance work or whatever, anything Jimmy fitnessy stuff. And then I'm just sort of like helping them or holding their hand a little lighter. Like maybe it's just a couple fingers. Then maybe it's like a pinky and then they're maybe getting a half a step ahead of me and then another two steps. And then I'm just sort of letting, kind of just letting them go. And I'm always here. And that relationship, that, that trust that we've built to me seems like that really key catalyst, at least in my world, that helps that person look back now and be like, what am I doing? I never thought, I, I can't tell you how many times I've heard, I never thought I could do these things. I mm -hmm. would, oh my, you know, and, the, and knowing how that permeates into their entire world is so fun and so validating and empowering for why I do what I do. I, I love that. I love that. Fun. Yeah, I think that that's such a good example, too, because um, there is such a, a like a, a, an obstacle, a wall, a limitation that people put in their minds that their own narrative that they don't even recognize they're keeping themselves from doing something. Mm -hmm. And again, it's that self-talk of I, I shouldn't. I mean, even when I started with you working with you in the gym, I had never worked in doing any weightlifting, none. And part of that was because as a young person growing up, I would go into a large gym and the only people that were over doing weightlifting were really big, muscly dudes. And I'm yep. like, I don't belong there. That's not, that will never be something I do. And of course, the reason I ended up coming to you was because I had had a diagnosis where I was having bone density issues. And um, same thing. I mean, it was, I kind of needed to step into it slowly, um, having support from somebody that has seen somebody go from start to finish um, and be able to allow me to say things that maybe were negative self-talk, but then be able to support me to say, actually, you can break through this so that I could start learning. I could become aware of when I was hindering myself. I had some graciousness from you to allow me to move past that and then get to a point where I recognize that self-talk does not serve me and is hindering me from being able to move forward even further. I love, yeah, it really is so much about, I feel like so many of our episodes are going to come back to that self-awareness piece and just, just, no judgment, just start to listen and just observe and just be open and don't, you know, and it, yeah, right. Fun, fun. Mm, I love it. I think, I, think that's, I think that's a good place to leave it. Maybe so. I think so. Kate, always a pleasure to chat with you. Thanks so much. And we are going to do it again. So we will Absolutely. talk soon. Okay, Thanks. see ya. Take care.